Hello guys, in this video we are going to be working through how to size a continuous stirred tank reactor, otherwise known as a CSTR. And as we know with CSTRs we have some kind of flow rate into our reactor and we're going to assume that it's well mixed and we're going to have an exit stream containing products and unreacted reactants. And in this example I'm going to be having some generic chemical reaction in which A will collide with some molecule B to form a product C and product D. And a caveat here that is a very important point to hit home is that A must be your uh, limiting reagent. Uh, you need this needs to be. You need to check your stoichiometry. You need to check your inlet conditions and make sure that you have correctly identified your limiting reagent before performing these calculations. Otherwise, you can arrive at a very wrong answer. And then another term that we're going to be looking at later on is called a conversion. And to give a brief definition of that conversion is essentially the percentage of your limiting reagent that is actually reacted inside of your reactor. As we know from chemistry, we don't always get 100% conversion. Um, and so X tells us how much of our reactant actually will react in our process. And so the very first thing we're going to be doing is turning to the mole balance at steady state of our continuous stirred tank reactor. We know that accumulation, because we're at steady state, is equivalent to zero because we have no time components of any of our terms, everything will be a constant value. And what we're going to recognize is that coming into our reactor, we have Fa naught moles of A per second coming in, leaving, we have Fa, and then this is G plus C term, I lump together into this RAV. Important point to make here is that this is the rate generation or consumption of your component A. And if we just care about sizing a reactor, what we really care about here is our volume. So if we rearrange this equation, we would find that volume is equivalent to Fa naught minus Fa quantity divided by minus Ra. And so now that we're at this point, what we're going to make a note of here is that if we wanted to calculate uh, or translate Fa in terms of Fa naught and conversion. What I mean by that is what we can say is uh, Fa is equivalent to 1 minus x times Fa naught. So if you think about this intuitively, when x equals 1, when we have 100% conversion, uh, this Fa will equal 0 because you've reacted all of your reactant, your limiting reagent. Uh, when x equals zero, when we have absolutely no conversion in our reactor, what we're going to find is that Fa is equal to Fa naught. So we just had our limiting reactant pass straight through our reactor with nothing happening. So this equation should make intuitive sense and it is very important in this derivation. So if we expand on this a little bit, we're going to recognize that Fa is equal to Fa naught, and I'm just distributing the Fa naught here, minus Fa naught times x. I'm going to plug this into this equation. What we're going to reach is uh, this, and I'll make this an equal sign. This term is really equal to Fa naught minus Fa naught plus Fa naught times x. And I'll try to write clearly. Quantity divided by minus Ra. These first two terms cancel each other out, and we're left with the volume of our reactor is equivalent to Fa naught times x quantity divided by minus Ra. And so this is the key equation to reach when you are sizing a continuous stirred tank reactor. Uh, an important thing to note here is how as we increase the demanded conversion, there's a um, positive correlation between conversion and volume. That should make intuitive sense. Um, there's also an inverse relationship between volume and the rate of our reaction. That should also make sense. If we had a really fast reaction, we wouldn't need a big reactor. If we had a really slow reaction, we would need a really big reactor. Um, and then in addition to that, we also see that volume is uh, positively correlated to the flow rate that we are expecting because as we increase the flow rates intuitively we expect to need bigger and bigger reactors so if you can reach this equation um, you're in good shape to start sizing continuous stirred tank reactors and i hope this video helps let me know if you have any questions and thank you for watching